It's been no secret that one of the more popular series on the YouTube channel has been the One Year Later series, taking a look at 2019 NHL drafted prospects and talking about them, checking up on them, seeing what they accomplished in their draft plus ones. Last time we talked about a Habs guy, it was Cole Caulfield, and that video is currently at 8,000 views. So a very, very big thank you to the Habs Collective fanbase for consuming the content and showing to me that what this kind of thing is, is something that you would like to see more. So, we're taking a look at another Montreal Canadiens draft pick from the 2019 NHL Entry Draft and asking the question, hey, what's up with him one year later? Today, we're taking a look at Jaden Struble. Now, Struble is not necessarily somebody who has had the most star power, nor who has had the biggest presence among Montreal Canadiens fans as a prospect. He's a good prospect, don't get me wrong, but in terms of popularity, the guys like Paling, the guys like Primo, the guys like Caulfield and Norlander have much more clout, I guess, for lack of a better term, than Jaden Struble does. This is despite the fact that the Montreal Canadiens took Jaden Struble with their second pick in the draft, selecting Struble in the second round, 46th overall. They selected two more defensemen in Gianni Fairbrother and Matthias Norlander in the third round, but with how Norlander performed in the Allsvenskan this past season and getting all those awards like crazy, he's kind of taken over the spotlight as one of the more prominent and popular Canadiens prospects. Struble, though, is one who you should not be sleeping on. The six-foot-tall, 205-pound left-handed defender is a guy who a lot of Canadiens fans were somewhat intrigued by when they made the pick. This is because in his draft year, Jaden Struble was playing for the St. Sebastian School in the U.S. high school leagues. This means he wasn't playing junior hockey technically, he was playing in a league that was technically under the USHL. The USHL is pretty much the American equivalent of the WHL, the OHL, and the QMJHL, and the high school leagues are technically under that. So, playing as a high school guy, six feet tall, just under 200 pounds at the time, Struble was a player who just completely dominated things by himself. He had 40 points in 28 games played, which is a great number, don't get me wrong, but the competition he was playing against wasn't really the best. As a result, though, Jaden Struble was ranked 124th by Future Considerations, 56th by HockeyProspect.com, 111th by McKean's, 63rd by TSN and Bob McKenzie, and 48th for North American Skaters by NHL Central Scouting. As you can see from this, there was a lot of variance as to where people thought Struble was going to get drafted. Would he be taken in the top 50 or the top 100? Maybe even outside the top 100 in general? But the Montreal Canadiens and Marc Bergevin, they were confident in this player, and they were so confident that they were like, hey, let's use our second round pick on him. Now, this is the angle that we talked about with Jaden Struble when I made a video about him a year ago, the fact that he was literally the strongest player in the draft. Take a look at this tweet here from NHL PR. Jaden Struble finished first in five of the 18 fitness tests at the NHL Scouting Combine last year. He was first in bench press, he was first in mean power output, standing long jump, and his grip for the right hand and the left hand were the strongest in the class. Now, something that you can actually take a look at here is the actual results. This is the combine fitness results from a year ago for the bench press, where they take 50% of a player's body weight and they measure how powerful they are when they lift up that body weight in watts per kilogram. Jaden Struble was first by a mile, a 9.42 watts per kilogram, when he's lifting up 50% of his body weight. You can see some other guys on here, like Niels Hoaglander and Cole Caulfield. Some of these guys had it a little bit easier than Struble did, because some of these guys are smaller. Cole Caulfield, sure, he's able to lift up 50% of his body weight, but 50% of his body weight is much less than Struble. Now, I know because math works the way it does and 50% is 50%, I get it, it's equalized across the board. But even just taking a look at the biggest difference here, 
it's between Struble and Hoaglander, first and second. The guy was crazy, unprecedentedly one of the strongest players in the draft, and that was something that really really reflected on the ice when you watched him play. Jaden Struble a year ago playing in the high school leagues was a guy who just really played with an edge. He was a confident defender out there who wasn't afraid to act as the point guard and lead things up himself. Obviously, as a defender, you have to learn how to pass it properly, and Struble can do that. But Struble was one of those guys where if you gave him space, he would take advantage of it. He'd charge in with the head up, and he would find no problems breaking into the zone because his skating was so good for that league. It was one of the reasons why I was super excited to see Jaden Struble suit up for the Victoria Grizzlies in 2019-2020. That didn't happen though. That was the original plan. He was supposed to go to Victoria and then go to Northeastern University in 2020-2021, but instead he skipped out on Victoria entirely and just went straight to the NCAA after being drafted. It should be noted though that Jaden Struble was born on September 8th, 2001. He is one of the youngest players of the 2019 draft, and because of that, it gives him a literal extra year of playing time over guys that were drafted who were born much earlier. A guy like Lassie Thompson, for example, who was also eligible for the 2019 draft, was born September 24th in the year 2000. This guy was a full calendar year older than Jaden Struble, despite the fact that they're both taken in the same draft. So for Struble, age is definitely on his side, and he made the NCAA straight out of the draft. And I'm not gonna lie, it took him a while to really get acclimated to the NCAA game. Obviously, when you're playing against American high schoolers and then going up against American college students, there's a big difference. But for Jaden Struble as a 6 foot 205 pound left handed D man, it took him a while to transition, but he eventually did transition quite nicely. He had zero points in his first eight games, but he did finish off his season with 10 points in his last 13 games, finishing up the entire year with 10 points in 21 games. However, he did suffer an injury that sidelined him for the remainder of the year in March. So the development sort of took a little bit of a halt. You don't want to see that happen to your prospects, but the way things are going right now, for a guy who transitioned from the high school leagues to the college leagues as an 18-year-old and was an immediate contributor getting half a point a game overall and just under a point per game in a 13-game stint, it's a very, very good sign for a player who was one of the most physically fit in the entire draft. Jaden Struble to me was always somebody who had legit NHL potential, which is why I put him in my top four category when I made my Habs Prospects tier list video. I legitimately do think that along with Matthias Norlander, along with Alexander Romanov, Struble is a top four potential NHL D-man. It's not just gonna be Romanov leading the charge on the left side. We have Norlander, we have Struble, we have Gianni Fairbrother, who I do believe also has NHL potential, and Within the reins of one NHL draft, the Canadians pretty much just bolstered their left side and made it so much better than it was the day before. So with Struble, he's a guy who is going to take him a while to become an actual hab. I see him spending at least another year with the Northeastern University Huskies and eventually transitioning into the pro game, either with Laval or either making the NHL right away. But... That time is going to come in a few years. It's not going to be right now. It's not going to be next season. We're going to have to wait for Jaden Struble to become a Montreal Canadien, but there is a lot to be excited for. A player who is literally the strongest player of the entire draft, getting first place in five fitness tests at the Combine, and a player who went under the radar just because he played in the high school leagues, but a guy who really does have all the tools to become an NHL talent one day. That to me is Jaden Struble, and one year later, I am still very, very happy with the pick. So Habs fans, comment down below what you think about Jaden Struble, where does he fit into the lineup in a few years, but the big question I have to you is, when the Canadians made that draft pick, were you surprised and did you like it? 
I know the majority of Habs fans watching this video probably had no idea who Jaden Struble was the moment they made the pick, but there was a lot of resources online talking about Jaden Struble, and he was a guy to me that I thought was a very, very underrated prospect. So to see him go in the second round when he was supposed to go somewhere in the middle of 50 to 100, maybe even after 100, it was a big surprise to me, but I liked it for sure. I hope you enjoyed this video, so I'm and bye.